Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Your presence is here with us. Thank you for teaching us the word of God and guiding our minds unto you. Now again our hearts and our minds are open to hear and receive the word of God. And we receive it gladly with faith and meekness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to begin from the book of Genesis. You remember we started on our subject on the realm of the spirit. You see the men and women all over the world who want to be successful and they are looking at how can they be successful? How can they uh, be fulfilled in life? I found out that no matter what you do, what you study and copy in the world, maybe someone was very successful by taking certain steps and then you decided to take those same steps, you may not be successful. You may do exactly what he did and still not get it. Because there are other things that you do not see. There are other things that cannot be communicated in book form to say this was what I did that made me successful. But there are some of us who have been given the insight, the revelation to know we have the ginosko. We know what to do. And we are also given the spiritual ability not only to communicate it but to minister it into the spirits of men. Success, victory and prosperity are qualities of the human spirit. They come from your inside. While we're on that, I'd like us to read a verse of the Bible, Ecclesiastes in chapter number 9. I want you to turn in there. Book of Ecclesiastes. I hear some people call it Ecclesiastics. It is not Ecclesiastics. It is Ecclesiastes. Have you found it? If you don't know where it is, turn to the table of contents and locate it. Oh, why I love the Bible. See, if you came into church today without a Bible, now you're in trouble. <laughs> See, you don't know what to do. You're just going to be listening like this, like someone's going to tell your story. No, you want to be successful, get a Bible. That's the number one book of success. You got to have a Bible. Without a Bible, your success will not only be limited, it will be short-lived. You found it? You know, in Africa, there are no... They have no living legions. They kill success. They destroy success. And so, they cannot communicate their prosperity to the next generation. The reason being, their success has not been based on the Word of God. In several nations, particularly in, in Europe and America, where the Word of God had been received many, many years ago, you'd find families to the fifth, to the tenth generation that have carried on a chain of success. Even though many of them today don't believe in what their forefathers used to believe in. And that's the reason they are losing it. 
You see, a lot of them, they're losing it now. They're losing what they used to have. They're losing their joy. They're losing, you find very wealthy people committing suicide. Why? Lack of fulfillment in spite of everything they got. They couldn't trace what they had in their lineage. But over in Africa, the word of God is still very young. It's just coming. There's been a lot of fighting. Internal squabbles. So, um, they haven't had time to master the word of God for themselves. So they can live by the word. Even ministers. There are very few ministers who, who have um, in their family to the third generation. Ministers to the third generation. There are very few. Even second generation ministers are rare. Most of them, most of the ministers you have today, the people who, they were Muslims before they became Christians. They were drug addicts. They were drunkards. They were... Uh, 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 Babalawo's children, they were <laughs> children of witches and wizards. You know, I mean, no, it's wonderful. Thank God. And that's the result of evangelism. But you see, that's the reason why a lot of them still have this background. They still have this background. And so they're not seasoned in the Word of God, even though some of them may be in their 50s or 60s. But they're not seasoned in the Word. It's not been in their generation. Because they haven't learned to stick with the word, a lot of their children are not even in the, in the church. Some of their, chi their children have vowed never to be ministers. It's sad. Hallelujah. Because they haven't gotten a hold of the kind of things we're talking about here. And that's why we put it on TV, so they can get a hold of it and leave by it. So the church you see in Africa, particularly in Nigeria, has a long way to go. So there, there's a lot of evangelism going on. That's why you see there's so many churches and thank God we're still have, we're going to have more. But you see, um, not yet seasoned. It's not yet strong. It hasn't taken root deep. But it will. Amen. All right. Now, I, I said to open to the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter number 9. Are you there now? Okay, look at verse 11. And I want you to read it to me. What does it say? Again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want you to start again. I, I didn't hear what you said. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? That's pathetic. It's pathetic. Painful. But exciting too. And I'll tell you why it's exciting. It says, I returned. Who's this man? Who's talking? This is Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived before Jesus came. He said, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. He says, you may have been practicing to be the fastest man. Now, books on success will tell you, you want to be the fastest guy in the world, you want to get the gold, then train, practice. Train your muscles. Train yourself. Become fast at it. Solomon said, but I looked and I saw that the race is not to the sweet. The fastest guys don't always win the race. He said, I saw it. He said, I saw it. I saw it firsthand. I saw it. They've trained. They're the best in town. But when it comes to running, they don't win the race. Now, uh, we got a World Cup, right? Going on right now. Alright? Now, I told some people that at the finals, we're going to have France and Italy. That's what I told you. 
Yeah. I told him, I said, at the finals, we're going to have France and Italy. But by far, they were not the best. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now look at this. It says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. He said, the strong don't always win the battle. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But then he says, but time and chance happen it to them all. What, what does it mean by that? He says, but opportunity in Oh, I'll show it to you. It's better to read it to you from the, from the Living Bible. I want you to listen to this. You say Living Bible. I thought every Bible was living. Yes. So I'm more alive. So I want to read to you from a very living one. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, Again, I looked throughout the earth and saw that the swiftest person does not always win the race nor the strongest man the battle in that wise men are often poor and what he says wise here he doesn't mean men that have the wisdom of god but these super intelli intelligentias that come on tv and tell us what everything ought to be like they're broke and many of them who are writing newspapers, many of them journalists are broke. Broke guys writing to broke people. <laughs> no, when you're smart, you don't read things by broke men. Rich people never criticize rich people. It's always the poor that do it. So don't, 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 don't feed yourself with information from those who are broke. If you want a change, you, you, if you don't want your life to be like his own, don't read what he writes. Because he can only give you what he's got. What should be praiseworthy, he condemns. Then you join him and have the same spirit. Where do you think you're going to end up? Like him? I read things written by successful people. And not just successful people. To be a success, you must help other people become successful. Success is becoming more like Jesus by helping others become more like Him. More and more like Him in your ways of doing things. Hallelujah. So He says, not a battle. He says, oh, not, put it, I'll read it to you in the Living Bible. Not the strongest man, the battle. In that wise men are often poor. And skillful men are not necessarily famous. He's a skillful man are not necessarily famous. Think about it. In Nigeria, I believe there were lots of men who could have beaten the, the, the champions of the uh, uh, WWF or uh, um, World Boxing, what are they call WBA, what? World Boxing Association, I believe. Those champions could have been beaten by some of the street guys here. But they're not famous. They're fighting in the street. So skillful men are not necessarily famous. Look at those who are doing, driving um, their own Formula One on Todd Mainland Bridge. <laughs> They're doing their Formula One there. But Schumacher has made a name. Why are you there? Vroom, vroom. Eh, you think you, can, you are faster than me? Oh, vroom. <laughs> And by the time you get to where you're going, you don't win anything. <laughs> Only you. You've just made your car older. The next morning you start in... <laughs> you've been tearing it on the third mainland bridge. Look at you. <laughs> That's where you were practicing. But it is all, he says, he says it is all by chance. What does it mean by chance? The word is opportunity. 
He says, by happening to be at the right place at the right time. Hey! He says, it happens by being at the right place at the right time. How can a man be at the right place at the right time? That is it. That's why I'm talking to you. How can you be at the right place at the right time? Phronesis. That's how you can be at the right place at the right time. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. What does the Bible say? Can you read it? Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number 27. Read it to me. Good. He says the spirit of man, not his brain, not his head, not his mind, but the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That is where the light of God is. It's in your spirit. That's where you are directed. That's where you are led. That's how you can be at the right place at the right time. It means being located in the perfect will of God. Romans chapter 12. Have you found it? Read verse 3. Romans chapter 12. Have you seen it? Okay, read it to me. Again, God has dealt to who? To who? Everybody. Among you. He's talking about those who are born again. Every one of us. He says, God has dealt to us the measure of faith. Every one of us has the same measure of faith. And with that measure of faith, the question is, what do you do with your faith? Do you use that faith to get the right thing? Now, David said to Solomon, wisdom is the principal thing. He said, therefore what? Use your faith to get wisdom. Now, some, somebody is trying to use his faith to get money. Oh God, I claim it in the name of Jesus. I claim it. I, I claim one million naira. I claim one million dollars. I claim all the francs, uh, all the euros. I, I claim all the... You know, he's claiming all the wrong things. The Bible says, wisdom is more precious than rubies. He said, it is better than gold. It is better than choice silver. So he says, go for wisdom. He says, with all thy getting, get understanding. So, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, what? Get wisdom. And with it, get understanding. That's what you need. That's what you need. And wisdom is not in the mind. Wisdom is in the spirit. You see that? Wisdom is in the spirit. Wisdom doesn't come from all the books of the world. Wisdom comes from the word of God. From the spirit of God. It is imparted to you. And you can, you can increase it through the knowledge of the word of God. Because the word of God is wisdom. The more of God's word in your spirit, the more wisdom you have. The more wisdom that's available to you. And remember, the Bible says, I'm talking about practical wisdom. Christ already has been made wisdom unto you. And that is theoretical wisdom. We said that's Sophia. Okay? But when you begin to study the word of God and understand it, what happens is you receive synesis. You start having some ideas in your mind. It starts changing your thoughts about God. And that develops into practical wisdom. Where you start putting 
things to work. Acting. Acting. For many of you, you need a new mindset. For some, you need to develop your mindset. Some need a totally new mindset. Some have been negatively programmed in life. It doesn't matter what you read. You just continue in that programming. For example, if you have someone who is a thief, I want you to understand this. A thief is not somebody who steals. Hmm. A thief is not somebody who steals. To be a thief it is the quality of your spirit. It is the personality of your nature. You are not a thief because you stole. Nor are you a thief because you steal. You steal because you are a thief. First, it is the nature of the man. He has come to have a certain mindset. He just necessarily thinks of how to take something from someone. As we're here now, there are few people who may be here trying to steal from someone else. That is the way you have been programmed in life. You don't want to steal, but you can't help it. You will steal. You will attempt to steal. Except you are caught, you will surely steal. So you steal because you are a thief. You are not a thief because you have been stealing. You were first a thief before you ever stole. Now I want you to understand the nature of the human spirit. What you are today is a result of the programming of your spirit. Not your mind. Your mind is the door to your spirit. The spirit is the quality of your personality. That's who you are. The mind is a tool. So you can change your mind and say, I'm not stealing today. But it doesn't mean that you are no longer a thief today. You are still a thief. But you are on recess. <laughs> you get what I mean? So your mind says, not today. But your nature is the same. Your spirit is the same. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. You need a new spirit. So he says, a new heart will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take out of you that stony heart. That stony heart. That can watch a man die without helping him. That stony heart. That can cut a man to pieces watching him die. That stony heart. That takes a gun to kill another man. The father of little children. That stony heart. Wicked heart. Your heart is so hard. And God wants to take it out. And there's somebody here today. You have been so wicked. So hardened. Your heart is so hard. God is calling you today. He said, I'll take that stony heart out of your flesh. He says, I will give you a heart of flesh. A soft heart. Oh, glory to God. That has love. And the greatest power in the world is love. Not hatred. Not wickedness. Look at with all the wickedness you have practiced. Where has it taken you? You've killed. You've watched men die. You've been hardened. What has it done to you? Success has eluded you. Well, you understand now. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. And it says, it's by being at the right place at the right time. Oh, glory to God. Being at the right place at the right time. And that only happens through the wisdom of God. I told you what wisdom is. I said wisdom is a force. Is a force. Wisdom is a power. It is a something. It is that something that makes you say just the right thing that should be said. That makes you go to the right place at the right time. That makes you do what you ought to do at the right time, at the right place, for the right purpose. That is wisdom. It works in you. It causes you to be just at the right place at the right time. That's wisdom. Why did you go this way? You thought it was your mind. You thought it was your decision. But it located you. 
and brought you into the place of opportunity. Very important. Very, very important. When you let wisdom lose in you. When you appreciate wisdom. The wisdom of God. How can you appreciate wisdom? By appreciating the word of God. Listen. The word of God is the voice of wisdom. The Bible is the writing of wisdom. He's penned his word. So that we can read it. And understand it. And walk according to the light of it. I told you, you're going to be so successful. You're going to be so prosperous. Because you're being programmed right. You see, it's on the inside. You're getting the right seasoning. And when, when you're alive... Uh, let me show you something. Oh boy. Alright. Turn to Genesis. Genesis chapter number 1. You found it? In Genesis chapter number 1, in verse 26, the Bible tells us, God said, let us make man. Is that right? In our image and in our likeness. He said, let us make man. The Hebrew word is asa. It means, let us construct let us do let us accomplish it is the visionary word for what you want to do like when you say i want to build a house this is let us build man let us make man let us bring him into being let us do this let us make man in our image that means let him look like us and in our likeness that means they didn't function like us. So man was made to look like God and to function like God. Man is a creator. Man is a face man. You understand that? He functions like God. Now let's look at, let's look at the idea. So he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. I said the word for make is asa. Now in verse 27, he says, so God created man. Have you seen that? Come on, come on. You're not looking like you, you saw it. You with me? Something is about to happen. Hallelujah. Mm. Ay, 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 ay. Let's read it from verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the, earth, uh, the cattle, and over all the earths, over all the earths, I like that, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Huh. Verse 27. So God, so God, somebody say God, 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 God. Bara. That's the word. God created. It's the Hebrew word bara. God created man. This is nice. God said, let us make. Let us construct. Let us build. Let us bring into being. It's the visionary word. Like I want to build a house. I know the house I want to build. Okay? But you see, I want to build a house. It's a visionary word. Let's make it. Let's do it. So God created. He didn't use the same word. Asar. Why? Because Asar is a visionary word. So now God created man. But when he created man. Come on. Read verse 27. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Where was man when God created man? Where was man? Hold on. You'd see it in a moment. Hmm. Bara. You wouldn't forget that, would you? Okay. Turn to chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. 
I was sharing part of this with you the other day. Okay, from, from chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 God did these things in different days. It wasn't on the same day. Come on. The first day he did some. Another day he did some. The third day he did some. Fourth day he did some. The, and then until the sixth day. It was the sixth day that God made man. Right? But look, look here. He says, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. When they were created. I want you to mark that word. When they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Uh oh. You mean he did it before it was in the earth? Come on. Are you catching it now? Ah. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. So, before the first day and the second day and the third day that we have recorded, there was a day that God made all these things. He created all these things. Where? In His Spirit. Before they were in the earth, they were in Him. He said, let us make man. Hallelujah. Let's make the plants. Let's make, let's make the animals. Let's make this and that and that and that. And then He made them, but they were inside Him. Then on the first day he began. All right, now watch this. Watch this. Verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground, and the Lord God formed man. Formed. Now I want you to take note of three words. The first one is asa, make. The second one is bara. Create. The third one is Yasa. Form. Yasa means to form. Like you use clay to form, to mold. Mold something. You see it now? God said, let us make man. Yasa. And so God created in his vision that man. Bara. Then it was time now to form that man that he had made. That he had created. He was now going to form him according to the, the vision that he had on the inside. Yes, sir. So God, yes, sir, man. Now, he made man to look like him and to function like him. In other words, this is what you ought to be doing. You say, I'm going to do this. I told you, I told you, I was going to build an auditorium, right? And I said, look, we will do it. It's inside. Many, many times I've walked inside it. Yeah. I told you how we're going to have television Reaching out to the, uh, to the whole world. But that's what we're doing. It's working, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We're not through yet. There's still a lot to be done. You walk inside. So let us make. Then you create. Then you form. Hello? Say, I was made to function like God. I have the ability, the capacity, the mental capacity. So my reasoning is excellent. Listen, listen. You know why I told you to say that? You know why? Because that's what the Word of God says. And you are helping your spirit to get a hold of God's Word. Hello? Hello? Huh. 
Maybe I should show you something. Hallelujah. Tell us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. I want to read something to you. Just a moment. I want to read um, verse 17. Have you seen it? What does it say? I want you to read it again. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Was that what you saw? Every good, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Turn to St. John's Gospel, chapter 8. Have you seen it? Read verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. He said, why, why don't you understand my speech? Look at, the words were carefully coined. He said, why do you not understand my speech? Speech, lalia, that's Greek, lalia, it means my talk. It turned out to be a talk. So they couldn't understand his talk. He said, because you cannot hear my logos. Logos is revelation. Logos is the word of God, the whole body of truth that God has given to us concerning himself. So when Jesus spoke, he was the logos of God. But when men listened to him, they heard his speech. It was a speech. For some people, the word that's coming to them right now is the word of God. Someone could be listening. And it's a nice speech. He does not understand it. Jesus said, why don't you understand my speech? He said, because you are not hearing my logos. They could not understand the speech. It was a speech. Do you remember on the road to Damascus when Saul of Tarsus was going to arrest Christians? He said, I heard a voice from heaven. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, that voice spoke in the Hebrew tongue. And all of us fell down to the earth. He said, we all were there. I was the only one who heard the meaning of the words. He said, the others heard the sound. But didn't understand the meaning. Yet they understood Hebrew. Jesus spoke to Saul of Tarsus in the Hebrew tongue. With a loud voice everybody heard. But the others only heard a sound. It was Lalia. They had no understanding. But Saul of Tarsus told us what Jesus told him. How many of those people gave their hearts to Christ afterward? There's no record. They probably were among those who criticized him. How can Saul say that Jesus spoke to him? We were all there. We heard this sound. <laughs> now Saul has interpreted it to mean that Jesus told him something. These people. <laughs> no. It, you see, that's their phronesis. It's their mindset. They couldn't believe God talked to people. And so God didn't talk to them. God is a master communicator. He can speak to the closest person to you in the language that you understand. And still, it will be a lalia to you instead of a logos. So, uh, is it just what the man is saying now that you are hearing, that you are doing like this? You know, someone is listening and doing like this. You don't say, he is not the same thing we are hearing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the same thing. Ay, ay, ay. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. The Bible says the people of the Old Testament could not enter into the promised land. Why? He said because what they heard from God, they didn't mix it with faith. Hey! They didn't mix it with faith. When you hear the word of God, it will not help you until you mix it. There must be a chemistry. Do you understand? You must mix it with faith. When you mix it with faith, it will produce results. Shout amen, somebody. That's what I've done to the Word. That's why when I study the Word of God, it's like something is flying me. Come on. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm out of this world. 
because I mix it with faith. And he's made my life so beautiful. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sometimes I say, Lord, you, you, uh, you've made my life so wonderful. I'm so blessed. I think about the mind. Even with the mind alone. When I, con I, you know, I consult with my mind. I try to check, how, what, how, how did you come about this type of mind? You know, it's the word of God. A mind that knows no hate. A mind that has no bitterness toward anybody. A mind that just knows God, loves God, understands faith and the word of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You live on the mountain top. You look at the whole world from there. Nothing shakes you. Hallelujah. And I'm talk I, I said just the mind alone. I'm not even talking about all the other things. Just the mind. What about my spirit? The character of my spirit. Boy, I have been awakened to the fatherhood of God. There's a relationship, a koinonia. I know him. I walk with him. What a life. What a life. To respond to the Holy Spirit. Listen, you've got to mix the word of God with faith. Mix it with faith. Accept it. That what he says is what he means and that he means you he's talking to you that's the way to begin to open your spirit to god open your spirit to god you open your mind to the word of god not to newspapers huh? not to home videos and so on and so forth don't waste your time with the wrong things set your spirit afire with god's word hallelujah now, where you read in St. Matthew's Gospel said that um, every tree, the good tree, read again. Read again quickly. <laughs> Can you read it now? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's true. Turn to chapter 12, same book, and read verse 35 he says a good man oh, 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 oh if you don't have a bible this is another place i feel sorry for you hello watch he says here in verse 35 a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things you see that? Bring it forth is a Greek word, a compound word. Okay? I'll tell you what it means. It means to shoot out unresisted. It means to produce forcefully unhindered. Which means it will necessarily happen. Let's get the idea. Hello? You want to get the idea? Okay. Look, your success is going to be so powerful, so strong. You know why I'm so steady in my spirit? Because you're using the right material. Let's read from verse 33. Read verse 33. Want to go? Good. He says, hey, you want to do something? You want to see good results? He says, make the tree good. And his fruit, good. Or else, make the tree corrupt. So the issue is the nature of the tree. The type of tree. If you say, I want mangoes. You can't go and sow corn in the ground and expect mangoes. You can't sow corn and expect oranges. He says, make the tree good. And his fruit good. Or make the tree corrupt. And his fruit corrupt. Now look at verse 35. 
Now, it's good for me to read 34 to you. He said, oh, Jesus, Jesus is talking. Oh, generation of vipers, brood of snakes. He says, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? I, I want you... Am I talking to people who are alive spiritually? Are you catching what he's saying? Jesus has thrown in another big one. I said he's thrown in another big one. Let me show you. He says, you know, Jesus, Jesus spoke words. Ah. Mm. The living Logos. Listen to what he said. Oh, generation of vipers, how can he, being evil, speak good things? He said, speak. Because to bring forth those good things, you will have to speak them. You see it? It's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. You want to have health. You want your family to be in health. You've got to speak. He says, oh, generation of vipers. Ye snakes, he said. Creeping things. Deceitful fellows. He said, how can you, being evil, since you are evil, how can you speak good things? He said, you can't speak good things. No, he is not talking about when you are abusing somebody and doing your hand like this. Your father, your mother. That's not what, that's not what he means by bad things or good things. He means creative words. That produce results from our kingdom. Hmm. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the hearts, it's based on what you've got on the inside. In Proverbs chapter 4, in that 20, 24 verse, what does he say? He says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of your heart are the issues, the issues, the outflowing of life. The issues of life. He says they come out of your hearts, your spirits. That's where they are deposited. All the good things you want to experience in life, they are inside you. So he says, guard your heart. Don't let unbelief enter. Don't let fear enter. Don't let anybody talk you down. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He says, guard your heart. Disallow negativity. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because it is from there that the life that you want to enjoy, that's where it's going to come from. Oh, hallelujah. Man, oh my. Hey, uh, a good man out of the good treasure. Hmm. You see, I got good treasure in my spirit. I've deposited the word of God. Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly richly i got a good treasure of god's word on the inside of me every time i need it i pull it out every time i need it i pull it out come on somebody shout hallelujah out of the good treasure of his heart the good treasure of his spirits he brings forth good things I, uh, mm, ah You want to grow big businesses? Are you hearing me? You want to grow big businesses? God is not telling you to look for the money. God is telling you to believe for it. He's looking for somebody who can believe. Didn't you hear it? He said the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Are you hearing me? He's looking for somebody who can believe. Can you believe? I can believe. Somebody says you won't believe this. Oh, try me. <laughs> I can. He's not looking for somebody. Go look for the money. He's saying can you believe for it? The cattle upon a thousand hills, the silver and the gold, they all belong to God. He's looking for somebody to deliver them to. But you've got to stockpile the word of God in your spirits. Because you see, the wealth of our kingdom can only be used through the wisdom of God. God is a good investor. He doesn't commit his wealth. 
into the hands of those who are ignorant of God's word. He wants you to run this thing with wisdom. Listen, you haven't seen riches yet. You haven't seen. I'm telling you, this world is about to see something. Are you hearing me? Oh, hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. I can't believe. I can't believe. See, that's why I'm sticking to this thing. I'm sticking to the word of God. So when God speaks to me, I can believe him. He said, Moses, stretch your hand over the water, the Red Sea, the famous Red Sea. Moses knew about the Red Sea. Had never heard that anybody split it wide open. And God said, Moses, hey, hey. But Moses had come to a point in his life that he could believe God. He had been trained to believe God. He was ready for it. He wasn't afraid of the Egyptians. So when God said, stretch your hand over the water and divide it, Moses stretched his hand over the water. And God split it wide open. You see, you see that? He didn't tell Moses, look for the instruments to drain the water. He was looking for a man who could believe. Can you believe? I said, can you believe? Oh, the future is yours. future is yours I believe in your future I see you making waves all over the world I see you making waves all over the world I see you making progress taking over nations taking over businesses I see you moving somebody shout hallelujah go ahead like God Woo! Ha. You know, sometimes when you listen to the word of God, you might even ask yourself, I have, I've been so inspired, what do I do now? When you are asking yourself, what do I do now? That means you have not heard enough. You know what you should do? Get the tapes. Listen again and again and again. If after listening over several days and weeks you still ask yourself what should I do go and listen again because the answer to the question is there with you but you don't know yet so when you're saying ah with all what I've heard what do I do now that means go and listen again because the Bible says when the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves it doesn't say when the clouds be full of rain they ask what do we do now <laughs> when the word has not come as to what you should do listen again because sometimes you may need to hear enough for the vision to come and propel you don't keep it and say I've listened to that tip before no the word of God is now it's not where I listened to that 10 times 2 weeks ago I think I need to listen to a new one mm -mm. listen again listen again especially if it's in direction of the issues at stake listen again listen again listen again listen again the answer may not come at the time you are listening but the word is prepared preparing your heart preparing it for what the Spirit of God is going to bring to you otherwise if it doesn't prepare your heart to receive it when the answer comes you will not you will ignore it you will think it's just a thought and you will not give it attention it will just pass by but when the word of God has prepared your heart if God does you will hear if God speaks through someone else you will hear if it's a dog that's barking 
and the answer is coming from there you will hear it i'm telling you if the word is going to come to you with the rain that's falling you will hear no matter how god decides to bring the answer if he has prepared your heart for it you will hear it but if you have not used the word of god to cultivate your heart to get it ready even when it comes you will have answers for it but you know that i don't think so but god came you didn't recognize him it's like jesus the people were not prepared they had been praying for the messiah to come but they neglected the word jesus said to them you err because you know not the scriptures if they had known the scriptures when the messiah came they would have known but they were ignorant of the scriptures so when the one they were praying for arrived they didn't know that's the problem with many christians a lot of them were praying for something praying for the move of the spirit i still hear many of them praying today that god should bring into the church the things that we are seeing on a daily basis they are crying to god they prayed but when it came they ignored it they're asking for the move this is the move this is it but they don't know it has arrived but like everything in the word of god when it comes god does not announce hello oh ye people he doesn't announce it like that but those that are awakened in their spirits the bible says simeon by the spirit went to the temple how he had been waiting for the messiah he had been studying the scriptures when the messiah was born and taken to the temple for dedication simeon by phronesis was stared to go to the temple at that time and when he arrived he had a word for both child and mother Anna the prophetess had been waiting when it was time the spirit stared her up and she went straight you see it but all others who were spiritually deaf he heard nothing 33 years he still didn't know till they killed him say this i'm not ignorant say my spirit is open to god my spirit is open to god i can see myself moving i can see myself making progress i see it i see it i'm better now than before I see it I'm better now than before say so even today I am better now than what I was when I came in for the service I have been blessed I have been taught I have been informed I have made progress the future is mine Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and worship Him. Worship Him. Honor Him. The Lord is listening to you now.